Hey everybody, it's Lydia Fiedler here for Picket Fence Studios, and I'm going to talk to you today about the life-changing blender brushes from Picket Fence with this adorable stamp set too. These brushes are like my little pets. They are incredibly soft. They are cruelty-free brushes, and they're made specifically for crafting. The set of these brushes comes with all of these fun little shapes, and I'll show you why you want to have the different shapes as we go through the video. And they are designed to be very ergonomic. So with most stencil brushes, the brush handle is in a vertical position, which can make it a little bit difficult to blend. And these are in a horizontal orientation, and you would be amazed how much easier it is to use. Now I have stamped and masked these little clouds from this adorable picket fence stamp set. And so I have the masking paper down to protect the clouds because they will be white at the end. And I'll be blending a few different colors into my sky. I'm going to do a little bit of sky drama with these brushes. These will be available as individual brushes soon. Right now, they, the set is available. I personally like the set. And I actually have a couple more videos coming up where I show you how to use the different shapes. But then if you wanted extra brushes, you would be able to buy those individually. Now you can see how smoothly the ink goes on with these brushes. Like I said, they're incredibly soft and the brush head is very compact. So the bristles are really tightly packed in there together. And that means you don't get any streaks or weird little marks that you might get. I really never was very good at, at ink blending prior to having the right tools. I never could make the sponges work for me. I just don't have that gene. So this sort of takes the guesswork out of that for me and gives me a nice smooth blend because this is one of the looks that I just absolutely love. So now that I have my lightest blue down, I'm going to go ahead and anticipate a question that everyone has, which is, how do you clean your brushes? Because as you see, I did not clean my brush. I don't worry too much about those sorts of things, but if you are a clean tools kind of person, I will have a little segment at the end showing you how I do on those rare occasions clean any sort of brush. The method that I use is good for any brush. So now I've moved to this medium color, which obviously covers a lot faster than the lighter color, but I can still get such a smooth transition between these two and I'm just rubbing off the blue onto that mat before I move on to this gorgeous purple down at the bottom like I said I like a good dramatic sky and the purple helps give me just a little bit of drama down at the end and I'm in the habit of after I ink a brush I wipe it off on my mat you really don't need to do that. That's my muscle memory from having <laughs> less great uh, blending tools available to me. And actually, even from when I used to ink blend with just an old yellow sponge, you know, you would always have to get it off on your mat so that you didn't get a big splat of the sponge shape <laughs> in the middle of your project. But you really don't need to do that with these brushes. So. Feel free to ignore my old habits. They do die hard. And I'm going to come back and blend the transition between the blue and the purple with just a tiny bit more blue. I love this color. And that just helps to soften them down. The other thing that I do like is the bristles are so soft that you'll see I knocked my paper a little bit. I wasn't holding it down. It won't fold or crease the edge of your paper because they're just so soft and furry that you don't have to worry about that. And you'll see I'm even going back into my lightest color with this same 
brush, not cleaning it. So if I can remove any fear around that for you, I am happy to do that. So I'll blend back that transition again. That really does make it look more perfect if you do blend your transitions once you're all done. And you can see I got ink all over my hands too, which is always a good sign of a day well spent. So I'm removing the mask. This stamp set is fun because the clouds are irregular, so you can have a lot of different shapes. And even though I'm not making a super realistic card, I like that your eye isn't seeing the same pattern over and over again. So it's a great background stamp for little scenes like this. Now, I did not really think this through <laughs> all that well. As you can see, I kind of hacked up my masking paper. But I do want to use the negative space and the small oval brush from this set to add just a little bit of dimension to each of these clouds. And these tiny little brushes really help you precisely add details like this. So in this case, I want the bottom of each cloud to be a little bit shaded with gray. And it's amazing what a big difference that makes. Just that little touch of gray with precision that I can get from the tiny brushes. So I'll do the same thing for the other clouds. And I'll have to sort of piece together some of the pieces of my masking paper to finish the rest. But look how cute that is. That is something I would find impossible to do <laughs> without this tiny brush. And I think it adds a lot to my little cloudy scene. And this is a great kind of light gray ink that really doesn't interfere too much with my clouds. And I just blend in a circular motion with these brushes. You can't get it wrong because they blend so finely. But again, that's just a habit of mine. Now here's where it starts to get <laughs> a little crazy where I cut off the bottom. So if you're using this background and you decide to mask the clouds, don't be like me. Remember what you were doing and keep them all in one piece. But what I was doing at the time was just making it easier for me to cut the little cloud masks out. And I wasn't, I'm not really that good at thinking ahead on things like that. But I'll make it work. It will be fine. Now to store these brushes, I have a, just a sugar mold, if you know what that is, that has a bunch of openings in it on the side of my desk. And if I do clean my brushes or even just rinse them off, under the sink after a blending session, then you can actually, because they have a plastic handle, you can actually store them immediately. You would never want to do that with a paintbrush that has a wood handle because the water would seep down into the wood. But these are plastic. And so you can go ahead and put the handles down into a cup or whatever your brush container is and just let them air dry. I have used these with both dye inks and with Distress Oxide inks, and they blend both beautifully. You can use any kind of ink with these, and the cleaning process and storage will be exactly the same. So now I have one cloud to go, and it's that one was kind of hard to find <laughs> on the sheet because the bottom of this one is most flat. But I'll just blend that little guy. And if I get a little bit of gray in the sky because I didn't have the mask perfect, that is totally fine. So now I will show you my cleaning technique. This is my favorite brush cleaner, totally natural, no smell. And even if the little cake of soap in here gets worn down, that's okay. You can just spray water into the container and then just get a little bit of soap on your brush and I use this brush egg for mine because it just has little ridges so if you're using something a little bit messier than I'm using today 
you can just rub the brush back and forth over the brush egg and really get everything out. It's not super necessary for dye inks, but it works great. And this soap is amazing. So I hope you've enjoyed this little tour of our life-changing blender brushes. Head over to our blog and our store for more information. And thanks so much for watching.